Good morning. Welcome to Planet Mojo. This morning, I'm going to take a bunch of cuttings from our lilac bush up here, and I'm going to show you how to propagate them. First, I gotta walk this crazy dog. I'm standing here trying to get this video started and she's getting so impatient that she's brought me three different sticks so that I can choose from them. We're supposed to walk and throw sticks right now and I'm not playing the game right. So I better get moving and I have my pruning shears, my trusty Felco 7. I have that with me so we'll take some cuttings on the way back and then I'll show you what to do from there. No, there you go. Don't try switching sticks on me. Okay, so one half mile later and probably 200 throws. And we are ready for some lilac cuttings. Okay, this is a uh, common lilac. I got a couple of them here. I'm going to go with some cuttings from this bigger one. I believe this is like a white variety right here. Maybe not. That one's always been kind of sickly. I, I didn't plant these, so I'm not exactly sure what the varieties are. But I know that these are common lilac, and that's what I really want. But I have some Canadian over there, which it has a different smell. I love them for the smell. It has a different smell, but the butterflies just go nuts over those Canadian lilacs. And as soon as these flowers start to fade, the Canadian lilac starts. Maybe that's why it has so many uh, butterflies, because it's so late. So I'm going to get half of my cuttings from this common and half from the Canadian and I don't want to overdo it because what I'm doing is planting a line of them right along here just to block there's a private road right there which is actually we share that private road with a neighbor down here but I want to block the road because I do a lot of work out here in the summer and any little bit of traffic is kind of distracting so all right, what to cut? You need to cut last year's growth, and you can pretty much tell it. The lighter color right here, you can see where I cut, where is that? Right here is where I cut last year, and one, two, three, or this was two years ago because it's already a little rotten. So one, two, three came out right behind where I cut, and they grew up to here, here and here and then this is last year's it's you start at the very tip and work your way back until it changes color so this is like a, a light gray and this is a darker gray I'm going to cut about right here and I'm gonna take all you really need is three nodes which is one two three about that much right there but I'm going to do a little bit longer ones this year. And once they start leafing out, I'm going to get rid of any, uh, any stuff that's growing down lower so that it has time to grow some roots. They generally leaf out before they have roots, so they're using the energy that is stored in the, in the cutting here 
to survive until they can get some roots going. And the biggest thing is, uh, is drying out. But we'll go over that stuff at a later time. So what I need right now, I think I'm going to go with a dozen of the common and a dozen of the Canadian and then we'll head into the greenhouse. The greenhouse is a mess, but whatever. I'll show you what I'm going to do with them there. Not sure if you can see that or not, but there's my cat, Maisie. She went along with us on the walk, but she was in the woods most of the time. And my dog, Izzy, who still thinks we're playing the toss game. Okay, so I'm going to take this one. Nice and fat. And take this one here. And this one here. <laughs> I'm having a hard time seeing. All right, and where do I got here? Four, five, Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. 11 and one more of those really long ones okay that's 12 now we're gonna head over to the Canadian okay the Canadian lilac is a very different animal this is another of the common lilac and I don't need any more of them but you can see these are quite a bit more dainty than the common lilac. So, for instance, take a shoot right here, or a, it's actually called cane. You can see how tiny that is, but it is what it is. And we're going to grab a dozen of these. This is much harder to see what is the new growth and what's not. It's got so much uh, stuff remaining on it. All right, I'm not sure if you can see. It changes color right here, but I don't know if this whole cane right here is new. I believe it is. If you can't tell, I have never done the Canadian lilac before so we'll see how it goes okay we have five here oh there's a tiny little bird nest in there in the spring we have oh what are those tiger swallow tails there's some videos on it on the channel if you rummage around this thing just gets sometimes there's like 30 or 40 different butterflies on here it's pretty cool looking yeah I don't like the way these look at all but I'm sure they're gonna propagate just fine let's see what I have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. And take a big fat one. Eleven. one here 
That's a dozen. All right, now let's head into the greenhouse. Okay, I open the greenhouse up. A little messy in here. <laughs> Threw our uh, burnables in here at the end of the year and forgot all about them. I haven't been out here pretty much all winter, so it's it's fairly clean. It'll do. This is uh, Shelter Logic Honey. I'm busy. YouTube. Not stick. YouTube. This is a Shelter Logic greenhouse, and I have videos of me putting it up. And I had a starter chamber in here last year. I'm not going to be doing that this year, but I will be growing a bunch of flats of prairie grasses. And I oh, actually, I believe that's it. I'll be growing a bunch of different prairie grasses for our oak savanna restoration back here so if you want to see videos on that make sure you subscribe and stick around for that okay here are the canadian and here are the common yeah very easy to tell them apart so what i'm going to do is take six of each and I'm going to try two different methods. I've seen this other method done on YouTube um, where these are put directly into trays and just left for the rest of the winter and I propagate grapevines all the time and we do that differently so I'm going to do half of them the way I normally do grapevines, and I'm going to do the other half the way I've seen on this YouTube video. The problem is it might be for a different climate. We're in Wisconsin here, and it gets much colder than some of the areas where you see videos from, and methods that they use may not work here. So I'm going to do half and half, and if all goes well, I'll get all of them. To sprout this spring. It is, what is it, the 6th, February 6th. So it's a good ways until we get nice weather around here, but here in the greenhouse it's going to be starting to warm up in right about a month. It's going to be getting to the point where I can start getting stuff planted out here with heat mats. All right, so I've got some soil right here. And I don't know, these trays are, are pretty shallow. I think I'll just put it in pots and put maybe three to a pot. Yeah, that's the way I'll do it. All right, seeing how I'm only doing a dozen, I'm just going to put four in each of these. So I'm going to toss some pearl white in the bottom. For a little better drainage. A little dusty. Add a little to this. There's already perlite in there and compost and peat moss and all the good stuff. And it really is not fussy as to the soil composition because yeah, this is kind of frozen, so. I might have to go find a spade and bust this up. Good enough. Oh, this is one of my plant drills. This is what I use to Plant all my plugs, my prairie grass plugs from last year. Wow, this is frozen solid. Okay, that'll do it. Now I'm going to go add some water to these and thaw them out a little bit, and I'll be right back. Okay, I moistened the soil. Got some take root rooting hormone. Now, just 
it's going to get four. Okay, I'll try to get some random. Got six of those. And yeah, I think I'll uh, maybe trim some of this garbage off. Again, I've never worked with with this Canadian lilac before, so it'll be an interesting experiment. Got one of the really big ones, so I have five and six. So these will get the other method, and let's get these in. So what you got to do before you pop them in the soil, and really hard to tell on here because they're really tiny. You need to cut right below a node, and that's a node right there. The nodes have the buds on them, and sometimes they're more visible than other times you know when you get up when you have actual buds on it it's pretty easy to see you want to go just a bit below that you don't want to cut into it because that will kill it all right gonna get it nice and wet and then stir it in rooting hormone and plunge it down into our soil So, yeah, these will be much easier to see. And you use really, really sharp pruning shears. And don't use anvil type because they crush instead of cut. All right, a few more to go. Again, I'll go up a little higher on this one, but still right below the node. The node is where the roots will develop. <clears throat> they'll either develop leaves or they'll develop roots. And if they're underground, they're going to develop roots. So what I'll do is do two of each in each one of these. Okay, that does it for our experiment. We have six of each, common lilac and Canadian lilac. Now, these are just supposed to sit for the rest of the winter. Um, people actually push them into the ground in areas 
where you can do that, but you absolutely can't do that here. Uh, they should be able to handle the cold weather throughout the rest of the year, but they can't stay in here because it warms up too much during the day. And if I put them like outside right out here, they're going to get blown down and messed with by animals and stuff. So I think what I'll do is put these in the shed over here and then we'll deal with these. Okay, if you can only do one method, this is probably the best bet. I know for sure this works. So what I'm doing right now, I'm just gauging size using my gallon bag. I'm going to moisten some peat moss and I'll probably mix some perlite in with it. I, you can do either straight peat moss or straight perlite if you want to. Yeah, this is the only wild card with with this. I've done it with lots of grapevines and like, how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got one extra of this, which I guess it's not going to hurt anything. I'll throw it in there. Uh, not really. I wanted to do a uh, kind of a success ratio, see how many of each actually propagate. So what I'll do is dip these. Uh, this cat is going to be very insistent that I pet her. See, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong here. I left the little side branches on the other one. I don't think that they're going to make a difference. Um, watch out, honey. Hi, kitty. See, I have buds right here, so that, that'll send out a leaf. I don't think I need this top part at all. That's what I'm hoping. I really need to work here, big kitty. So, yeah, it looks like there's not going to be, this is a really odd plant, this Canadian, oh, I'm not sure if you've seen that or not, but I have a cat on my shoulders. That is her M.O. Whenever I'm working on something, she has to be right in front of me, and if I don't pay her enough attention, she jumps on my shoulders. Kitty, kitty, come on. Yeah, I'll jam this one in there. A little bit sideways. Don't want to get rid of that really nice bud at the at the top. This one looks pretty good almost the way it is. Just got to get close to the node. Okay, now I'm going to dip these and get the peat moss and get them all in the bag. Okay, got a gallon Ziploc bag with some peat moss with some pearl light mixed in and this little thing of water. I just dumped that in there. I just want it moist. I do not want it wet. So just put these in there, which might not be super easy to do. Don't want to damage them. So what I'm going to do is get these in there and 
it really doesn't matter if they're like fully covered or not. But that's that's about what I do. Now that I have these all bagged up, these are going to go in the refrigerator. And when I bring the other ones back down here to the greenhouse to start them, I'll start these at the same time. What I'll do is put these in pots as well, just like I did with those, and put all of the pots on heating pads. The, they're little special heating pads for greenhouses. What that does is it exposes, these are pushed nearly to the bottom of the pot, so the area right by where that cut is will be nice and warm, and the warmth is what starts the growing. If you want to, you can just do these right away. You could do them right now by putting them in a pot, putting them on a heating pad, and putting them in a window in your house. And it would help if you had a little tent over them to keep them from drying out too, but they should make it even without that. So you can just go right from, right from this step. If you were to go right away and put those on a heating pad, and leave them in the house they can't freeze again they would start growing but if you want to see these growing you're going to have to stop back it's probably going to be right about a month it's february 6th right now so march 6th we're getting towards the end of winter and in here about that time it doesn't freeze at night so if you want to see that make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon and if you have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section below. And if you give the video a thumbs up and or share it, it helps the channel greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.